a tribute to the forerunner. When one sees the present and the excitement of what is before them, the great moment in time, it is there that one becomes aware of the forerunner, the one whom inspiration is drawn, one who steps out of the shadows to ignite the flame of insight, cause, and revelation. This reason why is due to the forerunner. It is this why that makes blacks fight for change. It is this why that makes equality the most fought for expression in our world today and yesterday because the forerunner said why. I ain't got no problems with the Viet Cong. Muhammad Ali stood for justice and humanity that some never imagined before him and the cost to him personally did not outweigh the cause for this equality for all people as did Pele before him uniting the world through soccer to fight the ills of poverty in Africa and abroad. This forerunner took inspiration from Jesse Owens as he stood in the face of oppression, threats and racism at Hitler's Olympics, still winning four gold medals, causing the world to take note of the strength of a man's character, even when faced with insurmountable odds, being dissed in Germany and at home in America. Forerunner Frederick Douglass, a renowned speaker and probably the most notable figure of the 19th century that had the ability to challenge and change public opinion on slavery, stated in his book, My Bondage, My Freedom. Toussaint Elovature was an old man. Surely I am equipped, as he, referring to Toussaint Elovature, revolution against the French and Napoleon army leading, Haiti's, leading to Haiti's independence. The will of the forerunner always draws from inspiration that stood in the face of imminent odds, but yet believed in a vision given to them. If only but a glimpse of hope, of the possibility of seeing it as did Nelson Mandela when he stood against apartheid creating a movement of strength in a people who believed when they had none. Even when this movement led to his arrest for 27 years, he kept the fight. When he was released, he became the president of South Africa. Similar in style, this forerunner saw a dream that was so clear to him, he wouldn't let it go and marched for equality with a nonviolent protest against racism that changed the world. Dr. Martin Luther King was only a 27-year-old Baptist preacher when he stepped out on the world stage to fight for equality for all people. Only hearing the dream speech, forerunner Bob Marley brought the world reggae music that spoke of injustice and ways to peace for all people. So when Barack Obama said, why can't I become a lawyer? Why can I become the youngest senator? Why can I run for president of the United States? Now, he was only looking to answer the age-old question, when will change happen? He became a two-term president and won a Nobel Peace Prize, as the dreamer did Dr. King, and making the change he sought. Young, vivacious, and vibrant, Beyonce has given a voice to women of all ages and cultures in this modern era, singing against violence of African Americans in formation, <laughs> against violence of women if, in If I Were a Boy, with inspiration of strong women before her. Forerunner, Serena Williams, completely changed how women are viewed in sports, along with Sister Venus, challenging equal pay for equal play in Title IX. Serena isn't just the best tennis player in the world. She's arguably the most dominant athlete of her generation. But how can this be, you ask? Possibly due to forerunner Whoopi Goldberg. The comedian, actress, and TV host won an Oscar, an Emmy, a Grammy, and a Tony Award, the only black person to do this while speaking up for civil and equal rights. Whoopi has given an example of how to stand on the shoulders of those before you. When Maya Angelou shared with us why the caged bird sings, in her memoir, 
should redefine the perspective of African Americans. The bird knows it is free in spite of its current conditions. Maya said, and Oprah heard this forerunner loud and clear and ran with her inspiration to break barriers of the glass ceiling of inequality and injustice that she did along with many other achievements. The most influential woman of her time. She has had un united millions together with her position of love, thoughtfulness of others. The forerunner is also valued if we only paid attention to m why more of our world would change as it did when Shirley Chisholm, the first black congresswoman champion for civil rights and women's rights, leading her to be the first woman to run for the Democratic nomination for the president of the United States. She knew this was possible when she saw forerunner Rosa Parks sit to stand for the injustice happening to blacks, which began the bus boycott and eventually leading to the laws of segregation during the Jim Crow era to change. Why not me, is what Hattie McDaniel said after becoming an actress for the first black person to win an Oscar for Gone with the Wind. She reminds us of the limitless possibilities we sought with the why. Forerunner, Ida B. Wells said why, and became a newspaper journalist, then editor, when women didn't do that sort of thing. Her activism led her to investigate lynching in the South, and she was a founding member of the NAACP. Had it not been for Harriet Tubman and her involvement with the Underground Railroad, perhaps Ida B. Wells would have not had her why. But Harriet, better known as Black Moses, freed over 100 slaves. Why? Because Sojourner Truth said in her famous speech, Ain't I a Woman, causing the public to look at women's rights differently. The abolitionist and women's rights champion help, helped lead the way for women the right to vote. These four runners must have something in common to stand of strength against tyranny and the fire of hate also race, and also racism. What it is? Faith. So let us raise the level of our faith with that trust that with Christ, nothing can stand against us. Praise God, praise God. Amen. That's it, y'all don't have another one. I can hear this all day, so forgive me, but I can sit right there and just listen by myself, amen, and thank God for all that he's done for us, amen, because that's all it's talking about, it's thanking God for all he's done for us, amen. <laughs> Very well, very well. Amen. Amen. Thank God. My God. Thank God. He has been so good. In case you forgot, you just heard it again. Amen. He has been so good. My God. He's taken y'all through so much. Amen. He didn't leave none of y'all stuck nowhere. He just pulled you right on through. Amen. That's the kind of God I serve. I like that kind of God. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you can't sit him on no shelf. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you 
give him no rotten fruit or nothing like that. Amen. He's a living God. Amen. He's a living God. Praise God. Thank you for that. Thank you, choir. Amen. Amen. Who did that high pitch? Who, who, which one did? What? What? All right then. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's your choir. Thank God. Thank God. So as we go to the word today, um, praise God. That was good. Pray for your pastor. Amen. Our pastor. He mine too. Um, he's preparing for something later on today that he could not get out of. Amen. Um, but we pray that he does well where he is uh, preparing for later on. But also, thank God for you, for whom you are, what God is doing in your lives individually, collectively, that <clears throat> wherever you go, you take the grace of the Lord with you. Amen? And you may not always see it as that, but that's exactly what it is. You have an anointing on your life. And everywhere you go, that anointing goes before you. Amen? There are things that happen purposefully because of that anointing. Whether you know it or not. People get ready for you when you show up. Amen? They, they, they're ready because the anointing has already gone forth to prepare that situation. Amen? I'm a firm believer of that. So if you didn't know, you should know now. Amen? But I thank God for that. Um, so let's do our confession of faith and we're going to jump right into the word. Amen. Hold your Bible before the Lord and say with me, this is my Bible. This is God's word speaking to me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. It's the sword of the spirit, the word of God. With it, I wage war against the enemy of my soul. I will fight the good fight. I will contend for the faith. I will uphold the honor of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 So, now that we know that you believe all this, amen, <laughs> let's hop right to it. Praise God. Father God, I just pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you might forgive me of my sins, Lord, in act, word, and in deed, Father, Lord. Bless your word as you have always done, Father. Uh, bless me, your vessel, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, Lord. That your word comes forth and not nothing of myself, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, the last time we hung out, we talked about um, the depth of salvation, amen? And we talked about the blood that comes with salvation, amen? That has gone before you beforehand, right? The reason why you are saved. <clears throat> Today, we're going to go a little more into that because it all involves faith. It all involves faith. To see a person that does not have faith is to see a person that is completely lost and completely without hope. That's what you see when you see a person that doesn't have any faith. They don't know which way is up. They don't know which way to go around. They are completely lost. And it's up to the faithful to bring them to a point where they are found. Amen? Amen. Somebody agree. It's up to the faithful. Because if the faithful aren't there, that person remains lost. They remain in a state where they cannot uh, go further. Amen. So the title of this message uh, is really, really simple. The title is Jesus Loves Him. Amen. He, he loves him. You guys are them, amen. You guys are them. Y'all them. How you doing, girl? You them too. Y'all them. You guys in the back back there? Long beard? Yeah. You them. 
Amen. You guys are them. Jesus loves them. And so we're going to look at a familiar passage because we're going to look at how he loves them. Amen. How he loves them. He doesn't love them any old kind of way. Jesus has a specific way of loving them, loving us. And before we get there, can you guys think about real briefly? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't look at me. Close your eyes. Amen. Amen. Close your eyes. Think about the last time you felt the love of Jesus. Think about the last time you felt the love of Jesus. You felt it. You felt his arms around. You just knew you was loved by him. Think about that for a moment. Think about how he loved you. Think about how it made you feel. If you got goosebumps right now, it's because you're right back in that place of how he loves you. Amen. You can open your eyes if you want to. If you want to stay where you are, that's cool too. But think about how he loves you. Because he says to us in, in the book of John 11, Then he said, then said Jesus, excuse me, behold, he loved them. Behold how he loved them. That's 11 verse 36, John. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved them. So Jesus didn't show just the people love, but Jesus showed them in a way that others saw it and they identified that it was love and not something else. Amen? It was, it was recognizable. It was love and not something else. It wasn't like, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't, you know, fondness. You know, he wasn't being gentle. He loved them and he showed them in a manner that others saw it and recognized it as that is what it is. Amen? So we're going to look at these people that he loved and how he loved them because how Jesus loved them is the same way he loves us. Amen? It's the same way. Jesus is the same what? Yesterday, today, and when? Forever. Forever. But if you think that yesterday's Jesus isn't like today's Jesus, I'm here to prove you wrong, okay? I'm here to change your thinking, alter your thinking. Because you have to understand or come to understand that the love that Jesus had before, it still exists today. You still have access to it today. Just like if he was standing right before you right now. But the scripture, then said the Jews, mm -mm -mm. Behold how he loved him. How he loved him. So we're going to look at Lazarus. Lazarus is, 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 is a friend of Jesus. Lazarus is a, got a couple of sisters. Lazarus is somebody that Jesus loves. And we're going to point out in the text where he's looked upon as someone that Jesus loved. Amen. It's not too often that, 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 he's, uh, uh, that someone is specified as a, uh, uh, of someone that Jesus actually loves. But Lazarus is pointed out that, that Jesus actually loved him. And so we, when we look at our scriptures and, and we look at verse 38 all the way to chapter 12, we're, we're going to look at how not only did Jesus loves Lazarus, but he loves him in such a way that it's uncommon to everybody else around him. It's uncommon to the disciples. It's uncommon to, to the common people. It's uncommon to the Jews. Uh, the church is there because they know who Lazarus is. They expect Jesus to show up. The Sadducees are there. The Pharisees are there. All these people of importance are there, and they find out that Lazarus is sick. Lazarus is sick. So they get word to Jesus because Jesus is not there with Lazarus, but they get word to him that he's sick because they know Jesus can make things happen. Amen? So they get word to Jesus like, Jesus, you need to show up now, as soon as you can get here. 
because we need you for Lazarus' sake. And he goes on and, 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 and they sent word, but, and Jesus does what he's doing. Amen? Jesus does what he's doing. But Lazarus gets so sick that eventually he dies. Eventually he dies, which is common. You know, people, people get sick and, and, and sometimes they die. Amen? Sometimes they die. But as we look at chapter 11 in John, Jesus says, let's look at verse 3. Chapter 3, I mean, excuse me, chapter 11, verse 3. It says, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. He whom thou lovest is sick. For when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. When Jesus heard Lazarus sick, he said, this sickness is not unto death. But we found out he died. So what happened? What happened? What happened? But then Jesus said, but that the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So something is happening here that only Jesus seems to know about. Something is happening here that only Jesus seems to understand, and it has everything to do with his love. It has everything to do with his love. The women want Jesus to show up right away, right? Why? Because brother is sick, brother needs assistance right now. He needs some mouth to mouth, he needs some resuscitation. He needs healing right now. Right now. And Jesus gets there, but by the time he gets there, something had already happened. He had been dead. He didn't just die, he had been dead. Amen? He didn't just die, he, he, he you know... Uh, the moon came up, the sun came up, the moon came up again, the sun came up, the moon came up again, the sun came up, the moon, he, he been dead. Okay? He been dead by the time Jesus got there. Jesus was a day away. One day. But by the time he got there, his friend that he loved died. So, we want to look at, first of all, Know that Jesus loves you. You have to know that Jesus loves you. So regardless of his sisters, regardless of who's around you when you're going through something, you have to know, you, that Jesus loves you. Because it's your faith that matters. Amen? Something happening with you, right? Your faith matters then, right? Not her faith praying for you, but your faith matters. So let's look at this, amen? We, we, we're not going to be long. This is real brief. I, I shared it with my wife earlier, and she was like, oh, that's quick. Yeah, we're going to see. Amen? We're going to see. So, verse 5 says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved all three of them. Amen? He loved all three. The sisters lived with the brother, right? The sisters weren't taking care of the brother. The sisters lived with the brother. Now, the brother got sick. The brother died, right? Jesus loved the three of them. They had a relationship. They were close to the master. Amen? They were close to him. And we got to know, even if Jesus is not operating with the urgency that we expect, he loves us. Even if he's not operating as we see it. Yeah, I called you five minutes ago and, you know, it's half an hour after and you ain't here. Yet, yet, even if he's not operating in the urgency that we expect, we got to trust that he loves us. We got to trust that. It's even bigger than that. We got to know it. And we got to know that his love is not necessarily what we perceive it to be. Amen? Lazarus got sick, right? Real sick, right? Lazarus died. Jesus said, though, it's not unto death. Regardless of what you think you see, it's not unto death. Oh, wow. We're we, we going to look at this real quick, right? I mentioned to the youth that today I have some youth for baptism, right? So we're going to baptize like four of them in a couple of weeks. But we mentioned the caterpillar. 
Y'all know about the caterpillar, right? Caterpillar goes through some stages. Caterpillar must ultimately die, but not unto death because eventually the caterpillar comes out of a cocoon, something else. He comes out something else. He comes out much bigger and brighter than he went in death, but he, he didn't completely die because he came back. Amen? Jesus said this is not unto death. Yeah, yeah. Took a pen in that. You, you want to see some things that might be dead, you, you, you look at them for a minute because they just might not be dead. And so, when we go into this, look at this, look at this, look at this real quick. In verse 11 of 11, these things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go. They said he died. Jesus said he's sleeping, but I go. That I may awaken him out of his sleep. And then Jesus said to them later on, 14, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the tent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So there's some things happening here that we really need to look at. Because Jesus is going to give us a picture of love that nobody has seen before. It's never been shown before. He said that the son, he said that the father and the son might be glorified. This is going to happen to Lazarus. Amen. Lazarus is going to go through some things. Amen. But the, they must happen to Lazarus that the son and the father might be glorified. That is what's important, that the, the father and the son might be glorified. Yeah. Lazarus is being used to glorify God. His family is like, the Lord should have got here. They ain't mad at him, but, but the Lord should have. The Lord should have got here. We was waiting on the Lord. We was waiting on him. And as you read the text, it looked like he's taking his time, Amen. <laughs> you know, it, it does look like he's went shopping. You know, he stopped and put gas in the car. You know what I mean? He dropped some things off. You know, I mean, it look, look like he's, he's taking his time. He's going about his daily business. Amen. But as we look at this, look, 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 look. We want to look at next point. Our next point is don't overact. Don't, don't overreact. Amen. Don't overreact. So just, just because things aren't working out like they, they should, like, like you believe they should, like, like, you know, you want them to. Amen. This is call it real. What it is, what it is. You want them to act, be a certain way. Just because they're not acting or, or becoming that certain way, let's not overreact. Let, let, let's not overreact. Because we are a faithful people, right? We, we are a faithful. Uh oh, some people don't. I'm sure of that. So, but we are a faithful people, right? And a faithful people have faith, right? Faith you don't always see, but you know you have faith, right? Faith is always demonstrated, right? Amen? It's not something you can always grab and pick up, but faith is something that you can demonstrate. So since we are people of faith, don't overreact. Like I tell, I tell people all the time, trust the process. Trust the process. Because there's something going on behind the scenes, whether you see them or not, they're happening. And they're happening either in your favor or somebody else's favor. But it's always the favor of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Trust the process. So as we trust the process and we look at these things, right, we want to walk as we truly believe. We truly believe. Now the sisters are going through, you know, they got people over there and they know that the words have gone out to Jesus and they know Jesus ain't showing up yet. They know he hasn't shown up yet. You know what I mean? And so the people are wondering, but Jesus loved him. He loved him. Why wasn't he here when he loved him? Regardless of how long it takes to get there, regardless of how short or how, how, how difficult the journey might have been, as far as they were concerned, he should have been there because he loved him. Because we've seen him heal people that he didn't even intend to heal. Remember that woman that grabbed the hem of his garment? He said, who touched me? She received something from the Lord even though he didn't give it to her. She took it. So if somebody could take something, surely Jesus could be here for somebody he loves. For somebody he loves. So as we look at this text, oh my goodness, this is, this is good stuff. This is some real good stuff. So I pray y'all, y'all get this. 
So he says to him that, he says, the cold thing, look, look, Jesus is sharp. He says, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. They wanted him to be there. He was going to get there. He eventually got there, but he said, I'm glad for your sakes I wasn't there when you needed me to be. Right? We're expecting from Jesus, right? We know Jesus, right? We sup with Jesus, right? We pray for, with Jesus, right? And, and, and we have a relationship. So when we, we call on him, we expect him to be there, right? Don't we do that in our prayer lives? Lord, where you at, Lord? Come on, Lord. They put locks on my door, Lord. Come on, they're serving me papers. This is my final check, Lord. What you going to do? Lord, now, Lord, please, Lord, now. We do this all the time. Don't you love me, Lord? God, please, please. We do this. We, we, we say some prayers of desperation. And that's where we find the sisters here. Not just the sisters, but those that are with them, those hanging out with them. You know how people make things greater than what they are? You know what I mean? You say you're having a bad image. Oh, God. Ooh, we. I had a day worse than that, boy. And they, they start telling you about it, right? Like, do I really need to hear all that? But this is what's happening. This is what's happening. So as we look at this, let's look at what Jesus said. Jesus, Jesus is so cool. So, Jesus says, to the intent that ye might believe, nevertheless, let us go. Then Thomas, then Thomas, y'all know who Thomas is, right? Thomas want to see some stuff, right? Then Thomas, right? It's called Didymus unto his fellow disciples. Let us also go that we might, that we may die with him. What the heck is going on, Thomas? But this is the word, right? This is the word. Then Jesus, when he came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Told y'all he'd been there, right? <laughs> the brother got, I don't know if y'all seen anything dead, but worms show up. Flies show up, you know what I mean? He dead. Because the sister's going to say, he stink, Lord. That's what they're going to say when he told him to move the tomb, move, 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 move the stone before the tomb. They said, he stink. His own sister said that because he's been in there four days. Four days. He don't smell good. If he don't smell good, that, that leads to what? Well, stuff don't smell good, what, what is that, rotten? Yeah. yeah, that's where he at. Four days, rotten. You don't believe me, leave some meat on the sink. And leave it there. All your windows and doors closed, but flies show up. How do you get in the house? Don't know, but they showed up. You keep leaving it there, eventually maggots show up. How do they get there? All the doors and windows closed. Rotten. Four days. They said, he stink, Lord. But the Lord got something for him. Oh, my God. Three, let Jesus use you as he pleases. Amen. Let him use you as he pleases. This is Lazarus. Lazarus is rotten. Lazarus got stuff on him. Okay? He jacked up in a bad way. Although he's wrapped up, he's, he's in a bad way. He's in a real bad way, but the Lord is here to show how he loves Lazarus. He's going to show us how much he loves Lazarus. Now, does this look like love? The brother don't smell good. The brother was sick. Jesus said it wasn't unto death, but he died. Something ain't real clear in my natural mind with this picture. But when we look at, when we look at what Jesus is showing us, we have to understand that, that, that Jesus has a plan that is all his own. Even when we in line with Jesus, even when we in one accord with Jesus, he got a plan that is all his own. Even if he's including you in it, detail by detail, he got something else going on. Why? Because he's God. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He knows what you don't know. He, 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 you don't even have a capacity to know what he knows. And he gracious you with that. But, but, so let me show you something real quick. So, Jesus says to them, right? Jesus said it's, it's not under death, right? It's not under death. We, we, we got that message, right? It looked like it was under death, right? So here we go. So in Matthew, 
Let me give y'all this real quick. I, I, I marked this in here because he's going to show us something in Matthew that the disciples missed earlier. Okay? They, they, they missed it earlier. In Matthew 16, in Matthew 16 and 18, amen? He tells something to the disciples. He's asking the disciples who the men say that I am. You know, they're telling him all these people that they say that he is, right? And so as he asking them this, he asks Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter tells him who he thought he was, right? He said, behold, you are the son of the living God, right? He tells him flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father. So as he told him that, he's telling them this at a place of, of, of Caesarea Philippi, right? So, and, and at that place, they have these pits in the ground, right? They have these pits in the ground. They call the pits Hades, right? That's what they call them because when they, when they stick stuff down in the hole, they stick it down so far, and guess what? It never touches the bottom. So they call it Hades. It's, that, that's what the people call them, right? And, and, and so Jesus is explaining something to them at this time in this area where we know there are pits that, they, that we call pits of hell. That's where they would throw people into the pit of hell. Hell. Amen? So Jesus is making some things known to them right here in Matthew that's going to show up with Lazarus right now. Amen? He said he's not dead unto death. Although he dead, although he's thinking, although he's in the tomb, he's already been buried. He's been there four days now. So he says something to him in Matthew, right? He says, <clears throat> Peter. Peter means rock. Amen? Peter. Peter means rock. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church and what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell they're talking about, he's talking about in those pits, right? Where the people are familiar with what they call hell, pit of hell, right? Where they're throwing people at because they're doomed, amen? So Jesus is standing here at the same place letting him know these are things that are taking place in your time period. Lazarus is going through something and they believe something ain't right here. Jesus said it's not unto death. But Jesus shares with them, check this out. Jesus shared to them that, that upon, upon this rock I will be my church and the gates of hell shall not. I got the keys. I got the keys to life and death. I got the keys. I don't care what hell looks like. I don't care what hell you've gone through. I got the keys to set you free anytime I get ready to set you free. Amen? Amen. He shared this with them. He, he, he gave them an example. Of this, right? And, and as he gives them an example, that somehow, somehow, I don't know how, but they forgot. How do you forget? I mean, but they did, they forgot. So even when he said the, 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 the sickness is not unto death and he died, the disciples should have had some insight that he said he got the keys to the kingdom. He got keys. We don't have none, perhaps, but Jesus got some keys because Jesus said he got keys. He told us at the place where we know you need keys. Because they measured the depth of the pits. There's no bottom. There's no bottom. Not, not that they can measure. Jesus said no matter what you think, no matter what in your natural mind, no matter what uh, uh, physicality that you see and that you heard and that you believe and that the people in the culture believe, I'm beyond that. I'm beyond that. Jesus said that, that, that he said, I'm glad I wasn't there that God and the Son might be glorified. We got to get this. Because, oh my God. So, so that he might be glorified, Lazarus dies. Jesus said it's love. Jesus said it's love. Love. Jamal, help me out. Come on, come on, come on. Think fast. Come on, come on. Jamal, Jamal, come on. Yeah, come on now. Hold it up. What are you sitting now? You're working. Come on now. <laughs> working. What is that? You got the capacity to fit in there. The love you have currently has the capacity to fit in there. Right? Right? Maybe it don't. Maybe I need something smaller. Maybe, maybe here, here. Maybe y'all, your capacity fits in here. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know? But you got the capacity of love, right? Jesus is trying, it, it, with his, he's going to show us that love needs discipline. That's what he's showing us right here. Love needs discipline. Without discipline, it's impossible to love. You've got to have some discipline in order to love. Because with the discipline, it, it, it opens up areas in your life that he could give you more. 
unless the discipline is tested, unless it's tried, guess what? You can't fit that. You got that little one. You, you, he said it's not unto death. I got the keys. How we forget? He gave him an example. Example two. Uh-oh. Y'all, 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 here we go. Help me out. Come on, come on, come on. Be quick. You know, you, I got to work. Come on. What does that say? Tell him. How, what is it? Are you sure? So that ought to be able to fit in that. Can, can that fit in that? I don't know. Show me. Can that fit in that? Yep, it fit. So you start off with one capacity, right? With the discipline of Jesus Christ to love, okay? This discipline is, increases your love. They, in the beginning, we read Jesus loved who? Lazarus and his sister and Martha. He loved them. Because he loved them, he had to give them some discipline. That means there's boundaries in your love. There's some boundaries with this love. There's some boundaries with faith. Amen? There are some. And he's going, no, you ain't done. Hold him up. Sorry he gave you the extra weight, but it's yours now, right? Because you got greater love than he had. Amen? His love, you holding his love and your love. Jesus. He loved them. He said, this is who he loved. This ain't John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. This is Lazarus, whom he loved, who's in the grave, stinking now. He don't smell good. He need more than Old Spice. He, he, he need more, more, more than, more than um, what's that stuff you lose, baby? Vagari. He stink. He need more than Pine Saw. He stink. Four days. But we're talking about Love. I don't know if y'all got that in the beginning, but Jesus, the title is Jesus loved them. Amen? Amen. He loved them. So he's loving them, but he's showing them discipline. You can't just spray it all out. And he ain't talking about guarding it either. He said it must be specific. It got to be specific. Because when it's specific, guess what? You can't handle everything. You can handle specific things. And as you handle a specific thing, amen, this specific love, it gives you the capacity for greater love. Greater love had no man to lay down his life for his friend. Greater love had no, come on now, y'all know this. Okay? And and, and he told you don't react, right? Don't overreact, right? He said, Jesus is going to use you to please who? Him. Jesus is going to use you to please who? The Father. That the Father might be what? Glorified. How's the Father glorified if you don't play your part? That part looked like death. It looked like death. Hence the caterpillar. But don't lose faith when things look bad because he's able. Amen? Amen. I know it looked bad, but, but, but he's able. Amen? You tired yet? Nah, this is love. <laughs> look, greater love don't get tired. Great enough, Lord, don't get tired. So, so guess what else we got? Oh, brother, help me out. Come on, come on, what you, what you waiting on? Yeah. Yeah, that's more love, amen? That's more love. More love. Do it say that? Do it say that? It don't say it, but it just is. It just is. Can that fit in this? Let's see. I don't know. Let's see. My God, it didn't just fit. Show them what it looked like. No, they can't see you. There's room for more, amen? There's room for more because it's more love. More love. Way more room for more love. And you thought you loved them enough, didn't you? I've been giving him love all this time, and he just don't appreciate my love. You give him greater love then. But he don't pass it. He don't appreciate none of my. I'm doing things for him, and I think I heard that before. Maybe y'all too, huh? Mm-hmm. She don't appreciate my. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Maybe because you ain't giving her the right thing. You giving her stuff instead of love. Hold it up, brother. Make sure they see it. Don't, don't get tired. You working today? Today a work day. Amen. So. So as we look at this, look, 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 let's look at this. So, so Jesus got the keys, right? He got the keys, right? He says, 
He got keys that hell cannot prevail against it. Those keys equal to love. It equals to love. How much love? Can you help us? Nah, before that, what you, what you got? Start with love. Then you got, I need Vanna. Somebody call Vanna White for me. Amen. But so, so I need love, right? <laughs> then we got greater love. Then we got more love. Amen. Amen. This love's come by way of discipline. Can't, if, if he just gave you more love, it'll blow you away. You couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it. You're not ready for more love in the state that you are. You got to just start with love. Amen. It might even be puppy love for some of y'all. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but heaven, and, but, but check this out. Help shall not prevail against this. But we got to understand the power of Jesus. We come to understand the power of Jesus. And as we come to understand the power of Jesus, Jesus said what? I am the resurrection and the life. I am. I am. What Lazarus is going to go through is called a resurrection. Because he was dead. He said, I am the resurrection and I give you life. I'm life. Amen. I'm also love. I'm also love. Amen. There we go. We're we working now. I'm also love. Amen. So, so when he goes in there, check this out. Check out this power. Check out this power. Check out this power. Amen. When he goes in the tomb, right? He first he tells him, move the stone, right? Jesus is cool. Tell him Jesus was here today, he'd be big pimping. Jesus is cool. I mean, Jesus is real cool. He's not, he's not disturbed. He's not all frustrated. Because when he shows up, guess what? Martha runs out there and said, Master, Master, Master. Lazarus, who you love, died. He died, Master. And then she goes back and she tells Mary. And Mary went to him. Went to him. And went straight to his feet. Went in worship mode. She didn't say nothing. She went straight in worship mode. Can you imagine that? You, you need a savior and, all, and you go straight to worship mode? She didn't holler out of anguish. She didn't say, oh, my brother's dead. Oh, God, let me go with him. You know how they be doing at them funerals? She didn't say none of that. Take me, Lord. She, she didn't say none of that. She went straight to worship mode. Straight to worship. Pulled out ointment. You know? Watch his feet. He's gone. Straight to worship mode. Because of love. She had something even her sister didn't have in the same household. Same household. She had a greater faith. And that faith is equated to love. So, let's look at this row here. We're we, we going to wrap this up. Amen? So, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, right? He that believeth on me, though he were dead, he that believeth on me, though he were dead, right here, verse 26, <clears throat> though he were dead, shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. Still talking about Lazarus. <laughs> Still talking about love, still talking about faith. Because if you don't believe this, you don't have faith. He said, even though it, it, they did, if thou believe, Lazarus died believing. He died believing that his father was going to come, that Jesus was going to show up. He was going to change that. He died believing. Y'all, that's love. Because Jesus didn't just love Lazarus, Lazarus loved Jesus. He died believing. Jesus said, this is death. This is not unto death, this sickness. Oh, he's sick, all right. Oh, he in a bad way, all right, but it's not unto death. He went there to death believing. And Jesus makes it plain. He said, and whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He's giving him the keys of the kingdom. He's talking about eternal life, but he's going to prove it right now. That what? That God and the Son might be glorified. So, how about you? Can, can the Lord use you? Use quick, huh? We're going to see. Can the Lord use you to show his love? 
to show greater love, to show more love? Are you going to be available for the Lord when he uses you? Because eventually he goes into the tomb. He moved the stone back, he goes into the tomb. Flies went out, you know. <laughs> Got that stuff out the way. And guess what he did? He said Lazarus. He called his name. Because when the all-powerful speaks to dead things, all dead things will get up. But he had to specifically call Lazarus. So that elsewhere was in there dead, stayed dead. Amen? Amen? But Lazarus, who died believing, was called. And he got up. Probably like this, you know. But he got up. Because he was still wrapped up. He was still wrapped up. He was still prepared in, in, in the death garments. They had to unwrap him. Take stuff out of his mouth and all that. Cotton mouth, all that. He was I mean, a bad way, y'all. Jesus said it's not under death. Because he died believing. The discipline of love. The discipline of love. You got to believe that when he said love, there's no greater love than a man that loves and lay down for his friend. Look, look. He, he, he told us again that, that, that there's nothing greater than these. There's no law. No law that can fight love, that can stand against love. That's what he told us. We got to believe this if you want life. Because life is available in love. Love comes in dimensions. It comes with some discipline. Because if you're not disciplined to receive the love that he's already given, for God so loved, what did he do? He gave. What did he give? His son. That what? That you might have everlasting life. And if you never receive that love, how are you going to receive greater love? How are you going to receive see, more love after the greater you got to first receive his initial love. That he sent his son for you. Just for you. He sent him for you. He said, not that you might perish, that you, he, he, he said, look, I got keys. My love are the keys that even if you die, I can bring you to life. If only you believe. We got some relationships we think are dead. Ain't been tested by love, though. But we call them dead. We know some folks that we have said, you dead to me. Never tried love. We got to take our emotion out of things. Because this has nothing to do with emotion. This has everything to do, everything to do with grace. And what grace is with love. How grace actuates faith. Because if you don't believe it's going to happen, you don't have a clue. It may not happen for you because you never believe. But more love is available once you receive love. Greater love is a step to more love. But you got to first believe and trust love. And it's available to you. Because Lazarus got up. Amen? Amen? Four days. I look. He, I done brought some people back to life. Meaning they heart stopped. I gave them mouth to mouth. I did. I did CPR. I did all that. They, you can't give them CPR until they die. Until things stop. Gave it to them. Boom. <gasps> they breathe. Been there, done that. That's in a matter of seconds, though. Minutes. At best. We do it all the time. That's what EMTs do all the time. Fire department do all the time. Doctors do all the time. We talking about something. Deeper than that. This is deeper than that. This ain't physicality here. This is spiritual. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. Love is spiritual. It only comes from God. If it comes from somewhere else, it ain't love, y'all. It ain't love. I'm telling you. Because God is. Yeah. So love can't come from nowhere else. Unless you're a child of. It's really that simple. I told you this was going to be easy, right? It's an easy message. You can tell this three or four times a day. God is love. Trust and believe faithfully. God is love. You get his love when you receive Jesus Christ. As you receive Jesus Christ, guess what? You get more, greater love. As you get greater love, guess what? He gives you the capacity for more love. It's discipline. 
They're going to say, you say that too fast. Say it again. Say it again. No problem. You received love by Jesus Christ. Because God sent his son because he loved him. Because he loved us, he sent his son that he might die for us and go on the cross. He was resurrected from the dead. And so shall you be because you're dead in your trespassing sins right now. It's easy. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? That's just me. Maybe it's easy. I think it's easy. This is where we are, though. So those dead things around you, why are they still around you? Have you given them love? Why are they still around you? My brother, he works with plants and stuff. He's a, I don't know what he is, but they call him Vinny the Gardener. They, yeah, something like that. One of them words, right? They, they call him Vinny the Gardener. He's real good at that stuff, right? He takes dead things all the time and, and revives them. Plant life and stuff. You can have an ugly yard. He goes in, he makes it beautiful. It looks like those Japanese gardens and stuff. I mean, he's good at it. He's good at it. But check, you know what's up? <laughs> I'm using. He can do that with other things, but he fails when he applies it to himself. Like most people. Baddest carpenter that you know. Got a raggedy house, huh? <laughs> he got stuff everywhere, huh? Yeah. <laughs> The best painter you know, you go to their house, they have painted this and started painting on that. You know, they real creative, they just ain't settled in some area, right? We have to learn to apply love first. Just, 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 just the, the love that God gave us initially. Receiving his love initially and what that is. What is his son to us? Amen? How do I, how do I show the, the fruit of God if I don't first show love, how do I do that? How do I embrace you? How do I feed homeless? How do I, how do I help people get jobs? How do I do all these things? How do I give you any of that and I ain't gave you love first? And we people of God, we should show love. How do we, how do we, how do we do that first? When the first order of business should be love. If you got children, the first order of business is what? Love. I know when they're little, you give them a whole lot of that. And then we call them something at two years old. What we do that for? Call them terrible. How do we call a, a two-year-old terrible? He ain't lived that long. But we call him terrible. Somewhere between terrible too and, 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 and infancy, love got stopped somewhere. We must have stopped giving it somewhere and, and allowed them to become terrible. Because they can't get there on their own. Amen? We play it apart somehow. Terrible. Show them again. We got to give them that. Got to give them that. So they don't become terrible. Amen? And then we got another thing. When they reach teenagers, they call juvenile uh, uh, delinquents. How, how we get that? How we, how'd that happen? What, what happened with us that they become a delinquent now? I don't, I, I'm, I'm missing it. <laughs> how, do, how did that happen? You know? And then they become menaces to society. Oh, Lord. How do all this happen when we have access? We have this. Love, greater love and more love. How? <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> It, it doesn't add up. It's not, it's not adding up. So this is what I... This is what Jesus is showing them. He's showing them the discipline of love. He's dead. But it's not unto death. Because Jesus got the keys to the kingdom. He, he trusts the keys of the kingdom. Just as he has them, you should trust the keys of the kingdom. You can speak love over any situation and watch it change. Or you can speak death over it and watch it die. He said death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what you talking about? Amen? What you talking about? What would what, what it sound like when you open your mouth? Amen? Because it should refer to what we see. This love. It should refer to that love. Because if nothing else, look, look, really, that's all we really have for people. That's all we really have. Once we receive it, that's what we have. Everything else comes in us stems from that. 
Oh, unless you got memory. Memory makes you remember bad stuff and evil stuff and wicked stuff and foolish stuff and you, know, you place that in life. But old things ought to be cast away. All things becoming new. Old things ought to be cast away. All things becoming new. Amen? We got to love. We, we have the love to give, so we got to love. Amen? And we got to have love that's disciplined so we can get greater love. And then there's more after that. Amen? I mean, it's bountiful. It's bountiful. Without that, how do you extend yourself? How can you give more if you don't have more to give? You can't. For those of you, if you lack love, amen, I offer it to you today. If you lack some love, I offer it to you today. What you got, brother? He got barrels of love to give y'all, amen? He got a whole lot of love to give y'all, amen? It's enough for everybody, amen? But you got to first receive Jesus Christ. You got to first receive what God gave us as love. You got to receive his son. You got to receive his son. And after you receive his son, there's so much more. It's, 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 it's great. But you first start with his son. And then look, if you hold on to something, you somewhere where I mentioned earlier, where you spoke death on some things that need some living, so they need some life, offer you this love. Amen? It's right there in the scripture. He showed us with Lazarus. He said, Lazarus must go through this. I love Lazarus. I've chosen Lazarus. But remember Job? God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Jesus is saying to these people, the church folk, amen, because they was at the house. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they was there. I'm considering Lazarus. That I might be glorified. Because they rejoiced when he got up. They didn't just rejoice. They were shocked. Some of them fainted. They seen Jesus do some things. But they ain't never seen him do this. Four days he was dead. Amen. Four days he's thinking. Y'all saw the flies when they moved that tomb. He was thinking. But he said he's not unto death. He said I give you life and I give you life more abundantly. That's what's there. It's through his love. It's absolutely 100% through his love. And we have access to the love. Amen? We should be giving love constantly. The world can't comprehend it. He said so. He said it wouldn't comprehend it. But you give it anyway. What? That you might win someone. Amen? But if you don't have the first love, which is Jesus Christ, Offer Jesus Christ to you today, amen. All you got to do is stand, come to your feet, come down here, and we're gonna make sure you get Jesus, amen. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. If you got Jesus, but you lacking love somewhere, hold that up, hold that up, hold that up, hold it. Come on, brother, be quick. Look at that thing. That thing. There you go. Hold that up. So say this is you, right? You four by four, amen. Four inches by four inches, right? You four by four. That's the capacity that you have to love, amen? This is the capacity that you have to love, right? But you, can't, you, can only, you can only love so much because you got stuff in there. Some old stuff. You know what I mean? You got some stuff from the first husband. You got some stuff from, from your mom and them. You got some stuff from your, your grandfather and them, from your uncle who touched you improperly. You got stuff from your teacher that told you wasn't going to be nothing. All that stuff is stuck in there, so you, you ain't got too much room for, for the love that you should have. Because you got this stuff in there like cloud and the vision. Amen? And you remember this more than you remember that. Because this is right in front of you. You see it all the time. You look in the mirror and this is all you see. I ain't no good. They said I want them out so I'm going to work harder. Yeah, you're working hard but you're working without you work without love. You're working without love. So he got love to give you but love, I mean you can pour some of that in here if you can fit it with all this other stuff. All these bad memories that's holding you down. Memories. They're not even real. 
You lived them already. But you keep putting them in front of you like they're real. It's not real no more. It's, it's, it's just a memory. It, it's past. It don't even exist. It don't even exist. I know they dogged you out. I know you felt bad about it. But how long are you going to carry that when you got that to fill it into place? That can fill up this space right here easily. If we just stop with this. So you got to ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to deliver you from this. Because if you ain't delivered from this, it's going to keep showing up. Why? Because this is in your intellect. This is in your intellect. When you get baptized and saved by the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Ghost, guess what? You still have intellect, which carries memories. And that's what people walk in their memory. They always talk about what they used to be and how they used to do. Am I right? Y'all heard that before? Huh? It's time to be in the place of love. It's time to start utilizing more love. But you can't get it if you're not disciplined to stop that until you can get this. Look, look at the space here and look how much you can get. They don't even matter. It don't even wait. If you put that on the scale, the scale go down. You put this on the scale, it, it still go down on that side. Because it's nothing. It's, look at it. It's just a memory. It's a bad one. Get rid of it. You can't even forgive because you're stuck there. So forgiveness is impossible to some people who know Jesus. They know Jesus. Boy, they pray up a storm. But, but they don't apply it to themselves. My wife be acting stuff about me from years. I'm like, I forgot. I don't remember none of that. When people meet her and they're like, oh, your husband, you say, I don't know who they talking about. That dude dead, he been gone. Why they trying to raise the dead? Let that dead thing dead, dead, you know? What are they bringing up dead stuff for? She just listening. Check them. Don't let people speak death in your life. Amen? Don't let them do that. Because if you listen, you give them authority to speak it in your life. Get it away from you. It serves you no purpose. When God has a greater purpose for you. It serves you no purpose. Zero. If you want it. You, you can stay there. But if you want it. It's there for you. Praise God. Let's stand. Amen. So if... if Again, we offer you love, amen. We offer you the love of Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ, amen. The Bible says you're a sinner, amen. But you don't have to stay that way. All you got to do is confess that Jesus Christ died and he rose again, that you want him in your life, faith, amen. And you shall be saved. Some of you received him already, you living in that, and you was living a powerful life, but somewhere, you know, you went back there to the memories and you started doing things differently the Bible calls you a backslider but he loved the backsliders also amen he loved them too he wants you back so he can love you amen but this is available to you today right now you don't have to wait till tomorrow amen this is your invitation to receive Jesus Christ this is your invitation to walk back in the newness of life and it's just up to you all you got to do is come forward, amen? Let us give you what the Lord says he has for you. That you might be blessed, amen? Praise God. Help him out, brother. Our hearts cry.